Welcome to the second video of chapter 4, which is section 2, Apply Congruence and Triangles. So first we're going to write congruency statements. We're going to identify corresponding parts, those two objectives go together, and then we're going to use properties of congruent figures to calculate missing side and angle measures. So that's going to be adding some algebra back into it. You should be on page 9 in your packet. So of course we're going to start with some vocabulary. Congruent figures have all parts, and in this case by parts I mean sides and angles, are congruent. So it's two figures where all their sides and all their angles are congruent to each other. So I'm going to write that, to each other. The corresponding parts are the part of the first figure that's congruent to the part of the second figure. So I know that these are kind of confusing and vague definitions, so I think the best idea is just to move on to example one and jump right in. So example one says write a congruent statement for the triangles, and then identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. So our congruency statement, it's going to be triangle da 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 is congruent to triangle da 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 da. So first triangle doesn't matter how you label it. I'm going to say triangle ABC is congruent too. Second triangle is very important. So angle A is congruent to angle D, so D needs to come first. After D, I put B. Well, B is congruent to E, so E needs to come first. And then C is congruent to F, so then F comes next. So that's a congruency statement. Corresponding angles just means which angles are congruent. Well, I have angle A is congruent to angle D. I have angle B is congruent to angle E. And then angle C is congruent to angle F. I can tell that by the figure or by looking at the congruency statement. For example, with corresponding sides, I know AB is congruent to DE. And then I have BC is congruent to EF. And then my last one, AC, is congruent to DF. So that's it. All you're doing is taking information from the figure. So moving down, let's look at example two. Right now, I would like you to pause the video and do example two on your own. When you're finished, come back and we'll go over it together. Okay, so for the congruency statement, I'm going to say triangle JKL is congruent to. You don't have to have JKL, it could be in a different order, but then your second triangle is going to be in the order that you have. So angle J is congruent to T, so that's going to be the next one. K is congruent to S, and then L is congruent to R. Again, yours might not look exactly like this. For example, if you had triangle KLJ, that would be congruent to SRT. So if your first one's in a different order, your second one should also be. For corresponding angles, I know that angle J is congruent to angle T, angle K is congruent to angle S, and angle L is congruent to angle R. Corresponding sides, JK should be congruent to TS, KL should be congruent to SR, and then JL should be congruent to TR. So hopefully if you got that one right. If not, hopefully you now see the mistake you made. If you don't, make sure you bring any questions you have to class tomorrow. Okay, so example three is a few more congruency statements. I would like you to, well, we'll do the first one together. Okay, so I have triangle DEG is congruent to, okay, so D is my right angle, and the other triangle, the right angle is F. E is my angle that has one tick mark. That's going to go with G. So F, G, and then looking at this triangle, the last vertice is going to be E again. So what you may notice, a little confusing, is I have EG here, but GE here. That's not an issue. That's okay. It's okay to have, um, it's okay to have vertices that are, are flipped. Okay, right now I would like you to pause the video and finish the next two examples. 
We are not going over them together. We will go over them when you come to class tomorrow. Okay, moving forward. Okay, example four. It doesn't look like example four printed like it should have, so we're just going to have to skip that one. And we're, we're going to instead look at examples five and six. Okay, so in example five, it says, given that triangle ABC is congruent to DEF, find the values of X and Y. Okay, well, if I'm going to start with X, I notice that X is angle D. Okay, looking at my congruency statement, angle D should be congruent to angle A. So A is 87. So in this case, I have 87 equals 5X add 2. Subtracting 2, I get 85 equals 5X, and then X equals 17. I'm going to do the same thing for y. y in this case is angle C. Angle C should be congruent to angle F. Okay, well I'm going to notice I don't have an angle F here. So that's kind of an issue right now. So let me think, how could I find angle F? Well, I know that angle D is 87 because it's congruent to angle A. And then I know that all three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract that 87 and I subtract that 42, that gives me 51, which is then the measure of angle F. So now I can do 3y equals 51, divide everything by 3, and I get y equals 17 also. Notice it's just a coincidence that these both are 17. Most of the time, that's not going to be the case. Okay, so right now I would like you to pause the video and do example 6 on your own, please. Okay, so we are going to go over this one together. First, let's try to find A, which is angle T. For my congruency statement, I know that angle T should be congruent to angle H, which in this case is 51. So I have 6A subtract 3 equals 51. If I add 3, I get 6A equals 54. Dividing by A, I get, I mean by 6, I get A equals 9. Okay, next let's try to find B, which is angle K. Angle K in this case is congruent to angle S, which I don't know. So I need to find angle S. Again, if H is 51, that means T is 51. If I take 180 and I subtract 83 and I subtract 51, I get 46. Which in this case means that angle S is 46 degrees. So now I have 7B subtract 10 equals 46. 7B equals 56, dividing by 7, I get B equals 8. Hopefully that went well for you. If not, not a big deal. We will go over it tomorrow when you come to class. Okay, so moving on. The third angle theorem says, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, the third angles are also congruent. So if I have two triangles and two of their angles are congruent, the third pair also has to be. That's all the, the theorem is saying. Okay, so in example 7, we need to find the measure of angle B, D, C. So we need to find this angle here. Okay, well if A is 45, B is 45 because of the way that they're marked. And I know that this is 30, again, just because of the markings. Now if I look closely, I'm looking at this triangle here. Okay, well I have one measure of 45 and I have one of 30, so if I take 180 and I subtract 45 and I subtract 30, I get 105. And that's going to be this third angle right here. So angle B, D, C is going to be 105 degrees. It's okay if you couldn't see that. Um, this is something new, so you'll, you'll learn how to decompose those triangles better as we move forward. So please flip to page 11. Okay, so these are some properties that you've seen before, but we're going to write them down again. The reflexive property says that triangle ABC is congruent to itself. So that one should be kind of obvious. The symmetric property says if we have ABC congruent to triangle DEF, it says I can just write that equation in the, in the reverse order. order. So triangle DEF is congruent to triangle ABC. 
Okay, and that one should be kind of obvious. Transitive one is the one that we have a difficult time remembering. So this one says if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GHI, then, okay, if we notice I have ABC, ABC, that serves as the bridge between the other two angles. So then triangle DEF is congruent to triangle GHI. So again, those three should have been reviewed, but we will be using them. Okay, last thing we have to do is a proof, and then you are done with this video. So this is example eight. It says complete the proof. So first thing is it gives us a whole bunch of givens, which are all marked in the figure. So it gives us angle ABD. This one is congruent to CBD. This one, we know that these angles are congruent. So the first state, the second statement is BD is congruent to BD. Well, this one you've seen before. You should remember that this is the reflexive property. So any object is congruent to itself. So I'm going to mark that in the figure, one, two, three. So it's probably a good idea that I look to see what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that these triangles are congruent. In order to do that, I need all the angles congruent and all the sides congruent. Right now, I do have all three sides congruent. So I have one, two, three, congruent to one, two, three. I have two angles, so angle one, angle two. This leads me to statement three, which is blank, but it says the third angle theorem. Remember the third angle theorem says if we have two pairs of angles congruent, the third pair also has to be congruent. So in this case, which is my third pair? Well, my third pair is angles a and C. So angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay, now I have all the sides and all the angles congruent, therefore my triangles are congruent. The reason is if I have all sides and angles congruent, that means the figures are congruent. You could also write this as just the definition of congruent. Because by definition, congruent figures have all parts congruent. Okay, so we will be doing a little bit more of that when you come to class. When you come to class tomorrow, I expect that you will have example 6 finished and then example 3 finished. Those were the two that you were supposed to do on your own. As a review, what we're going to be doing in class, we're going to write congruency statements again. We're going to identify corresponding parts. And then once we have these congruency statements, we're going to be calculating missing side and angle measures. If you have any questions, please bring them to class. See you tomorrow.